back to the Kairos TV network. If you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe. K Rose TV is your go-to channel for inspiration and life-changing stories. Today, we have a very special guest, a former model and currently working as a nurse. She is here to share a very powerful story of how she overcame a situation where her trust was betrayed by someone that was supposed to be guiding her spiritually. So she's here to tell us how she found the strength to move forward and exactly what happened to her. So don't go anywhere. Just grab your snacks, grab your cup of tea. Let's dive into the story together. Bundu, how are you? It's nice to have you here. Doing well, thank you. And how are you? I'm good, thank you. Can you start by telling our audience who you are? So my name is Mpundu and I am 39 years old and I'm single and I live in Texas and I'm originally from Zambia and I am a nurse. All right. So moving on to our very first question, where exactly did you meet the Zambian lady that took you to this church? Was she somebody that you knew or is it somebody that you just met in the store or at a function? How did you meet this lady? So I met the lady. I've been knowing the lady for um, some years prior to her inviting me to the church. So she's, she's more like an auntie in the community, you know. So uh, I was going through a hot patch. So she said, you know what, why don't you come over? I go to this uh, Nigerian church. So why don't you come and fellowship with us and see how you like it? So I said, I was a little skeptical because I had been to so many churches. Um, but I said, you know what, I'll give it a shot. And that's how I started going to the church. And um, yeah. That's how I met the, I mean, I've been knowing the lady, but that's how I um, ended up going to the church. So you just thought this was an elderly lady in the community looking out for you in terms of your spiritual well-being, trying to help you so that you can grow spiritually. But then when she took you to church, what was your first impression of the, the pastor there? Uh, my first impression was, well, I mean, it's a nice church. It had a reasonable um, amount of crowd. And the pastor was pretty nice. I mean, he was friendly. He was welcoming. And I was like, okay, this could be a good church. And he was young too. So I said, no, oh, he's a young pastor, which is like not very common. So I was like, well, he's probably in my age range. So... I could learn a lot from this church, seeing where we see we all seem to be in the same age range. I know that you had a meeting with the pastor and you shared everything that was going on in your life at the time. And do you think that he was genuinely interested in helping you? without any strings attached. So this um, this was a whole different meeting. That was, I th that was actually before I even went for the service. So um, the, the lady said, oh, since you're going through all this that you're going through, I mean, you could talk to the pastor and see how he can help. Because, I mean, he's a pastor and he helps a lot of people. So I said, okay, no problem. So I scheduled a meeting with him um on a weekday to go there and speak with him about my the situation because I was homeless I didn't have anywhere to stay and so I shared my my uh, my situation to him he seemed really um nice about it and he said he would see what he could do and he would he said he could he would ask around in the church to see who who would be willing to help and then he also said, I mean, if I, um, his home was also open for me to go stay with him. So, and then we, we took it from there. Okay. So what was your understanding of the living arrangements 
with this lady that the pastor wanted you to stay with, where you asked to pay rent, was it just free accommodation that they were offering you? So, um, so he asked her if I could um, live with her because she was at the time the closest person to me and she's the one that introduced me to the church. So she, so the pastor asked her if I could live with her and um, I actually asked if I was going to contribute anything and the pastor said, no, everything was fine. And I could just leave with the lady and the lady was okay with it. So I didn't pay anything at the time. Okay, so this is the same Zambian lady that actually took you to church. The same Zambian lady that introduced me to the church, the one that I've been knowing for years that um, the pastor asked if I could, you know, share um, a place with her. And he asked her because he only had, he was, she was leaving with two, two of her daughters. So that's how she said, yeah, I mean, that's fine. That's okay. I don't mind. She's just like a daughter to me. So she can come and live with me. Okay. So I know the pastor had also offered his place for you to stay with him. Mm -hmm. So the pastor offered his place to stay as well, but I declined the offer because I was like, okay. Um, I mean, you're single and you don't have a wife so it just didn't sit right with me having to go stay with him that was very smart of you to say no i think that no single woman should be living with a man that they're not married to so i'm glad you said no so were you comfortable living with the family that you were living with Yes, I was actually very comfortable staying with the lady because she really welcomed me and she really did treat me like her own daughter. So I was comfortable staying there. We would go to church together, come back home and everything was good. All right. So I know that we wanted to have this conversation to share what happened when the pastor invited you over to his house. So. How did you end up at his house? What happened? So um, it was one time that we, I mean, I could see that he was really being nice, nice, nice to me, like nice. So I thought it was just being nice, you know, but he was extra nice. Mm -hmm. He would offer sometimes to drop me off at the lady's house. He actually, you know, he would check up on me. Uh, when I'm at the house, he would call me, he would text me, he'll be like, oh, I'm just checking up on you, you know, and all that. So I just thought he was just, you know, just being genuinely nice. Mm -hmm. But as time went on, uh, there was a time that, you know, the lady wasn't able to pick me up from church. So I ended up take, getting a ride from him. He offered to give me a ride to the house. But before going to the house, he suggested, oh, you know what? Um, I need to pass by my apartment mm -hmm. so I can, then I can drop you off once I, you know, go to my house, drop off my Bible and everything. Then, you know, I can drop me off. So I said, okay, that's fine. No problem. So we got to his apartment and he said, oh, take a seat. He offered me a drink. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And then um, then he started to say some things, you know. He started to say things like, oh, have you ever considered being married to dating or getting married to a pastor? So I said, um, no, not exactly. But I've had prophecies come to me saying, I am going to be married to a pastor someday. So, I mean, it was just felt like it was just conversations. Then he he kept on being really, really nice. And um, that's how I, wa I was at his house. Then he said, oh, you know, it's getting late. I'm not going to be able to drop you off at the lady's house. So, um if you could spend the night, just spend the night. I mean, I'm not going to do anything to you, nothing 
of, of any sort. But I say, I can't sleep here. I really need to go. I really need to go to um, auntie's house because it just doesn't feel right for me to stay in your house, considering you're a pastor and you're a single man. So he kind of, it, it kind of didn't sit well with him. So he kind of got upset about it. But I really insisted that I really wanted to go home. Then he started to make passes at me. He um, started touching me and started, you know, hugging me and wanting to kiss me and all that stuff. So that's what um, happened that day. And then he, um, because I was retaliating, he, he said, okay, I'm going to call you a cab to go. Then there were no Ubers, so we just used to use cabs. So he said, I'm going to call you a cab so you can go. That's how he called me a cab, and I um, went back to the lady's house. But that still didn't stop him from making any further advances. So did you end up going home that night? So um, after he, after I told him I really wanted to go, he said, no, you got to wait till the morning because you can't go like it's really, really late. So you can't go. So I spent the night there. I spent the night at his house. And then that's when um, he called the cab for me in the morning and I went to the to the lady's house. So um, did the pastor provide you with the spare bedroom when you stayed at his house? I mean, what really happened that night? Did he force you to sleep in his room? Yes. So when I was at his house, he was, you know, touching me and hugging me and feeling me, all that stuff that a man of God or a man that's not your husband is not supposed to do. And so when he made those advances, did he force you to sleep with him? Yes. So when he made those advances, I ended up giving in because I was scared at that point. I was really scared because it was in the night and I didn't know this man. And I was young. I was really, really young. I was in my twenties. So I just felt like, okay, if I'm not, if I can't, if I don't do this, I don't know what this man is going to do to me. So I gave in and he took, took advantage of me and yeah, yeah. And that's how, um, he took advantage of me and he really didn't even care. It didn't bother him at all and after that in the morning he um he actually offered to take me but i said no if you could just call me a cab because at that point i just didn't trust him anymore and that's how i took a cab and went back to the lady's house and um yeah I'm so sorry that you had to go through what you went through. A, a true man of God doesn't do such kind of things. You know, he's supposed to be your father, your spiritual father, to protect you instead of using you. Did you report what happened to you to the police? No, so I did not report him to the police, but I went ahead and told the, um, the lady that I was staying with about what happened, but she didn't see any, she didn't read too much into it. She, to her, I guess she just felt like, oh, it was just one of those normal things. Like she, she said, oh, I noticed he liked you. I noticed he was interested in you. So it's like, it didn't really bother her, you know? So, um, after that happened, it really affected me in so many ways. I just wasn't myself anymore. I just couldn't function the same way anymore. Um, 
So after that, the man, because the reason why I was staying in the lady's house was because he introduced me to the, to, I mean, not really introduced me to her, but introduced me to staying with her or made that suggestion. So because he's the one that made that suggestion, he withdrew the privilege of me staying with the lady because he already got what he wanted from me. And after all that, he started treating me like trash. He, the calls he used to make to me, he stopped the texts he used to, to send to me to just check up on me. They all stopped. And um, he then really went ahead and went the whole nine yards and suggested to the lady to say, you need to kick her out of the apartment. Like she needs to go find her way. Like she can't stay there anymore. And um, unfortunately, the lady was really siding with him, which really, really hurt me because first of all, me and the lady are from the same, same country. You, one would think she would actually side with me and considering she's an old, older lady and she's, I took her like a mom, you know? So I would naturally think she would side with me and maybe even just talk to the pastor and put him in his place, but she did not. She went ahead and said, you know, yeah, there's really nothing I can do because the pastor is the one that brought, gave you permission to come stay in my house. So since he says you have to leave, you have to leave. So at that point, I was so confused. I had no idea. I didn't know what to do. And he started making a whole bunch of threats when I said, oh, no, I'm not going anywhere. There's nowhere I can go. He started making threats of all sorts of threats. I'm going to call the police. I'm going to call immigration. I'm going to do this and that. Wait a minute. So he started making threats? Wow. I mean... Instead of apologizing, he started making threats. Yes. That's exactly what happened. So what happened next? Did you leave the house to get help from someone else? I know you said the Zambian lady was siding with the, with the pastor. So did you call somebody else from the church? Yes. So what ended, what ended up happening is I, I left the lady's house because, I mean, that's her house. I mean, I had no choice. I left the lady's house and I, I think I went and stayed somewhere else. I was just, at that point, I was just running from home to home, home to home. I was literally homeless. I was just moving around, moving around. And even when I moved out of the lady's house, he still was, you know, sending threats, talking about how if I don't leave town, he really wanted me to leave the state of Texas to go to a whole other state wow. to get away from the state of Texas. And I feel he did that because he felt threatened and I feel he felt like, okay, I'm going to tell the whole world and I'm going to, you know, report him. What did you do when this man started making threats and telling you to move out of state and that he was going to report you to the authorities? I mean, what did you do? I asked him why he was doing all this. He said I was the one in the wrong. And I asked him what wrong did I commit? He would not tell me. He just kept on insisting that I should leave town. Otherwise, he would make my life a living hell in this uh, state. So he went on and on and on and on about it. And where was the Zambian lady when all these things were happening? I did share all that information, every single detail of every um, single situation that occurred. I did tell her, but she didn't care at that point. I don't know what she would, what what benefit she was getting from the pastor, because I feel like she was benefiting something from him, for her to actually treat me the way she treated me. Because I don't see how somebody would really treat 
someone who you can literally call your own daughter in that manner and you, and you would just sit there. And Mpundu, how has this experience affected you mentally and emotionally? Hmm. To be honest, this whole situation has really affected me emotionally, psychologically, even physically, it has really affected me. Okay. And it's really brought in a whole bunch of things in my mind and in my heart. I have trust issues because of that. I just don't seem to trust men anymore, you know, and it just takes a toll on you uh, psychologically. Like you just start to feel like you're nothing. You just start to feel like like nobody sees your worth. Like it broke me in so many ways. It really, really did break me in so many ways. I felt like I was ugly. I felt I was not intelligent enough. I just felt like, I felt like God was so far away from me, seeing that somebody you would call a man of God would actually do you. It really, really broke me in so many ways, whether it was with relationships with men or relationships with women, it did really affect me. So that's probably maybe why um, in the past I've reacted in a certain way toward men and toward women because of what happened to me. Yes, uh, that experience can actually affect you negatively. This man took advantage of everything that you shared with him and used it against you. Did you get support from any other church members or from the community? So, because this was really, really, really personal and I was really ashamed about the whole thing. So the only person I told about the whole situation was the Zambian lady. And I told one other person that I really trusted. And, um, yeah, and I just let it be. I, I left it at that, and I didn't tell the police. I didn't file a police report. I almost did, but somebody told me, you know, just let it be. Just let God do what he needs to do. He'll fight your battles for you. So I didn't file any police report, but it really did affect me in so many ways that, you know, nobody should ever have to go through what I went through. I think, honestly, you should have reported him to the police because what he did to you was wrong. And uh, he could be doing the same thing to the other young girls in the church. Is he still pastoring? Yes, he is. He's still pastoring. He's still a pastor. And um, to my knowledge, he is actually married to the lady that he was actually cheating on when he was making advances on me as he told me he was single he was not married um little did i know he actually had a whole fiance back in nigeria wow i i i feel sorry for his wife honestly i really do so what did you do when this man started making threats and telling you to move out of state and that he was going to report you to the authorities. I mean, what did you do? So, um, I mean, because people, so there are people who actually do what they say, and there's some people who just talk the talk and not walk the talk because they just want to threaten you. So at that point, I really just took my chances and just stayed in the, in the state that I was living in, which is Texas. And I was like, you know, I mean, I found out that he himself had no papers. So, I mean, why? It's like a kid, somebody is over there making threats when they actually don't have the papers themselves. So, I mean, I just ignored him. I stopped all communication with him. And I just went on and lived my life and, you know, went on to another church and prayed to God. 
for healing, which took a very, very long time. It took a very long time to actually heal from this whole situation. But um, I mean, God heals all hearts. So it's been, it's been a journey, but I thank God that um, I'm good. And hopefully so somebody you, can learn from this. And so would you say you're totally healed right now? From that situation, yes, I am totally healed. But being a human being, you know, that's that pain still lingers somewhere, somehow. It still comes up, especially if you meet someone and they, you know, they kind of rub you the wrong way or kind of trigger things that kind of happens then, it, the trigger still kind of comes back to mind. But I have to catch myself and I have to pray about it. But with time, I mean, You'll the healing, complete healing will, will, will come. So have you forgiven this man completely? Now I have. Now I have forgiven him. It took me years and years and years to actually let go and to actually forgive him, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, even though God says we have to forgive, but it was really hard for me to really forgive this man. Even just the, the mention of his name just really would make me so angry, would make me so sad. Like I would cry when I would remember what he did to me. But, but I forgave him. I mean, if I saw him in the streets today, I would say hi, but that would be it. Only because God says we have to forgive, you know? Okay. Yeah, healing takes time, you know? It's a process. But I'm glad that you have given yourself a gift of uh, forgiveness because that's very important. And Pundu, what advice would you give someone going through what you went through or someone that has been through what you went through? What kind of advice would you give them? Um, I would... Uh, the advice that I would give a younger me and somebody that is in the age range that I was in, it could it could just it's not even just it's not even about the age. It could be anyone. Mm -hmm. It could be an elderly person. It could be a young person. But the advice I would give to that person is just be very careful. People are not always what they seem to be. So you just have to look out for yourself and don't believe everything that um, someone tells you, especially in the church. Just because somebody is in the church, just because somebody is preaching and somebody is at, over there on the poopy pe preaching does not mean they are completely whole. A church is a hospital. Church is a hospital for everybody, for anybody, including the pastors themselves. So you just have to be very, very careful and look out for yourself. And if something like that has ever happened to anybody, please do not, do not hesitate to call the police and report the person. Because if you just let someone like that just go scot-free, they will do that to so many other people. And they'll never learn. And they'll think they're doing the right thing. And everybody else will keep thinking, no, it's okay to just molest people and just shut them down and just, you know, shut, shut them by, you know, giving them all sorts of threats. Threats are just threats. But you have to protect yourself first. So report these people and, you know, make sure that they... They know that what they're doing is wrong. Excellent advice. You have a lot of wisdom. So, ladies, if you're listening to us right now and uh, you're going through something similar to what Mpundu went through, please tell someone about it. By the way, are you single right now or are you in a relationship? I am single and um, single, free to mingle. And... Um, if anybody would like to reach me and would like more information about um, what happened to me or needs advice on any situation or similar situation, 
you can catch me on my Instagram and my Instagram handle is I am forever young, which is I underscore AM number four ever young. Well, thank you so much for that information. I will share it in the comment section. If anybody's interested in reaching out to you, maybe for help since you've been through this, you know, I'll leave it in the comment section and uh, whoever wants to reach out to you can get the information from there. Mpondo, I know your experience has really affected you in so many different ways. Have you ever thought about seeking professional help, like going for therapy? I actually have. It's crossed my mind a few times, but I mean, I've been like, well, therapy is too expensive and all that. So I've always just put it in the back, in the back burner, you know, but it's something that I would like to go through because the situation still somehow um, affects me in different ways. Um, it does affect me even in relationships with when I actually date someone, like those triggers still come back and they tend to bring out certain behaviors in me because of what I went through. Same thing with girlfriends and family, it triggers a lot of things. It will be something that someone would say or do that would take me back to that situation. So I would really consider, I would still consider um, therapy so I could just be completely healed with prayer, of course, but therapy would be great. I, I totally agree. I'm a firm believer in prayer. There's power in prayer. And, you know, prayer does help us cope with any difficult situation. But I also think that therapy has many benefits as well, such as providing a safe space for you to express your feelings. You know, it, it gives us the tools to manage our emotions and also to, to heal from certain traumas. So therapy doesn't mean that, uh, and I know for most Christians, they, they do not believe in therapy, but you know, therapy does not mean that we lack faith or that we are weak in the Lord. We don't love the Lord anymore because we are seeking therapy. It means that we are taking care of ourselves by seeking that support that we need there's no shame in it because god wants you to get better and i may be talking to someone other than you Mpundu. if someone else is listening to me right now and they're saying i have been through some things but i didn't think that i'm a good christian by going for therapy there's nothing wrong you can go for therapy and you can also continue praying. No, I've never, I've never had any opportunity or form to actually express myself and express my um, situation. Um, and me being on this platform is really an, a really big privilege for me because it's really helped me in a way. And um, it's, some sense of healing, complete healing to myself. And it's a good thing that it's going to bring some healing to somebody else because there's obviously millions of women and women and men too, because there are also women that take advantage of, um, of men that could actually learn from this situation and heal from it. That is very true. I totally agree with you. Um, is there anything that you would like to share with our audience? Um, I would say, you know, um, certain situations that we go through in life really, certain sets and behaviors that we portray in, in, um, in ourselves when we speak to people, when we interact with other people, 
um, is because of what somebody has been through. So really, we shouldn't judge people based on how they come off because you really don't know what somebody has gone through. So you, you should take time to get to know people and take time to, you know, just learn someone because somebody could have been going through like something that I went through um, has actually affected a lot of relationships that I've been in, dating relationships because of what I went through because it triggers a whole lot of um, negative energies and negative um, emotions in me. So I personally try not to judge anybody based on their behaviors. Of course, I'm human. It, I mean, I will sometimes, not that I want to, but it happens. But then I'll, you know, remind myself and tell myself I can't judge anyone. So, um, yeah, so I, I would encourage people to just be kind to one another. And uh, when you go through such situations, just make sure you seek therapy because that will really help. And um, you got to pray too. It, it can be hard to pray when you go through stuff like that, especially if it's the so-called man of God that does that to you. But with time, healing comes through and you will be healed and you will get help and always make sure you get help. Never feel sorry for someone that's trying to destroy your life or trying to destroy other people's lives. That's the um, one thing I can advise anybody that's been through the situation or hasn't been through the situation. And I just hope that um, this podcast has actually um, touched someone and is going to help someone. So there's always hope out there. And yeah. I think, okay, for bringing me on your platform to be able to share my story and be able to uplift someone and encourage and help, help a life. Maybe somebody was about to take their life, but I'm glad that I was given this opportunity and privilege to be on your network. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your kind words. I really enjoyed having you here. You have been through a lot. I truly admire your strength and your courage. My prayer is that the Lord will continue blessing you, guiding you. And um, I know that there's someone out there that is going to appreciate the woman of God that you are, the woman that you have become. And uh, I just pray that the Lord will always protect you from such kind of people that you will never have to go through this in your life again. And remember, God loves you so much. He will always love you. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Continue coming back to our channel. Our goal here is to inspire you. And we also do share testimonies to bring glory to the Almighty God. Take care. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching.